Uh, my department is not involved in an investigation into alternatives to free school meals as an indicator of social deprivation. My department takes the view that entitlement to free school meals is an effective indicator of social disadvantage. Free school meals entitlement has a number of characteristics that make it the most reliable indicator for identifying social deprivation. It relates to the individual pupil, so it's more robust than a spatial measure, which assumes everyone in the area is alike. It is updated on a yearly basis, so it is current. It is clearly gathered at school level and is available to us a part, as part of the census return. It is highly correlated with multiple deprivation measures and with income deprivation affecting children index. Where appropriate, the department utilises spatial methods of deprivation, for example, the multiple deprivation measure and information on the residents and neighbourhood renewal areas are used in relation to a number of its programmes such as extended schools and sure start. The view of the independent panel that conducted the review of the common funding scheme was that free school meals entitlement provides an indication of the relative concentration of potentially disadvantaged pupils in a given school in a way that no other indicator currently does. I call Sidney Anderson. I thank the Minister for that response. But can I ask the Minister to comment on the response uh, from the Children's Law Centre that I have here to his proposal to reform the common funding formula when they state that the use of free school meals as a primary indicator to allocate funding fails to capture the needs of all vulnerable children, nor will it address low educational outcomes for some groups of children, in particular children with special educational needs. Um, I totally reject their finding. I believe that uh, when anyone looks at my record in relation to special educational needs, no one from a fair basis can suggest that I have discriminated against children with special educational needs in any way. And no one, in my opinion, can bring forward a sound argument which suggests that changes to the common funding formula which I have uh, suggested, which make no changes whatsoever to uh, funding for special educational needs, will disadvantage children with special educational needs. So I reject their commentary. I call Maeve McLaughlin. Good, and I thank the Minister for his, uh, his answer. But can I ask the Minister then why uh, poverty and social disadvantage still play a determining factor uh, in our school and education system? The reason it still plays a factor is because we have not taken any actions to robustly correct it. And those who criticise free school meals entitlement, and those who criticise directing further finance and more finance towards uh, large um, groups of children with free school meals and social disadvantage, have ignored that fact for decades. I am amazed when I see all these people coming forward now talking about the rights of children, talking about the rights of socially disadvantaged children, talking about the rights of special educational needs children, talking about the rights of children in general. They have ignored for years the fact, and it is a fact which is reported in the All-Party Public Accounts Committee report. It is reported in the Independent Sir Bob Salisbury's report and other statistical information we have that a child in free school needs is less, half as likely, half as likely to do well in education as any other child in education. Now, I'm not ignoring it. I don't believe as a society we can continue to ignore it, and we have to tackle it. There are, the consultation responses are currently being analysed in, re, in relation to this. It's worth noting that the majority support the principle of tackling uh, educational underattainment, at tackling it and, and using identification measures. There's differences of opinion on how we should do that. There are certainly differences of opinion on how we should do that. But if someone comes forward, or as a result of the consultation process, we can come together with a formula which, it, which tackles all those issues, I am prepared to accept that formula. But those who have ignored this for years can now not come forward and lecture me on uh, ignoring or infringing on the rights of any child. I call Danny Kinnahan. Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer already, um, although in the consultation I don't think there was a, a question there that specifically asked you to come up with your own ideas. But has the Minister investigated the policy of using data from super output areas rather than individual households as criteria for assessing eligibility to free school meals? And if so, what was the result of that investigation? One of the principles of a consultation is surely having an alternative. Mm. 
Surely that's the central principle of a consultation. If you go out with a consultation and say, do you agree with me or not, that's a ballot. It's not a consultation. They're different. And I think there's certainly a duty upon all the political parties and those who, who strongly condemn me for uh, using free school meals entitlement and tackling this mm -hmm. issue. There's certainly a duty upon those parties to come up with alternative. But as I stated in the House before, I spent a weekend reading the political parties' consultation responses and no alternative was provided by any of them. In relation to super output areas, as I said in my original response uh, to Mr Anderson, there is a direct correlation between high concentrations of free school meals and areas of deprivation. You're not going to find an area of relative wealth or middle income where you're going to have a high concentration of free school meals. Or you're not going to find an area of social deprivation where you're not going to find a high, a high level of free school meals. Both of them correlate across to each other because the children, particularly going to primary schools, travel relatively short distances to that school. So, members, and we will examine all elements as to how we fund these issues, but members keep avoiding the fact and keep avoiding the very important fact. A child in free school meals is 50% less chance of achieving an education than a child is not in free school meals. Somebody needs to answer that question for me when they're criticising free school meals entitlement as an indicator of social deprivation. Because it's not an indicator of social deprivation, it's an indicator of something. It's an indicator that child is not succeeding in education and we need to do something about it. I call Sean Rogers. Thank you Mr Deputy Speaker and thanks to the Minister for his answers thus far. International research minister shows that there's a strong link between education achievement and the occupation, education and economic status of the children's parents. Would you have any thoughts on including those factors in future measures of uh, education disadvantage? I would argue that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, the, the financial position of the parents states whether a child will receive free school maids entitlement or not. So there, that will mean either the parent is unemployed or in a low income background, which probably will be a low skills post, which will also indicate the educational background of the parent. So I, I would suggest that by using free school meals entitlement, I'm doing exactly what the international research suggests I should do, and also carrying out exactly what the Public Accounts Committee in June of this year, which all the parties in the Chamber signed up to, suggested I should do so. As I say again, Sir Bob Sealsbury's report uh, said I should do. Now, this isn't an idea I woke up with one morning. I thought to myself, you know what I think is a good idea? Free school meals entitlement is a social indicator of deprivation. I wonder would that have any correlation between the outcome of a child's education or not. It is based on sound international research and local research. There's no one else has come forward with another indicator or an alternative indicator which measures in a way which free school meals entitlement does. But the fact is this, there's some parties in this House who do not want to and are stridently opposed to giving more funding to schools with a higher concentration of social deprivation regardless of how it's measured. That's the simple fact of the matter. And I stated this previously. In 2006, when the direct rule minister forwarded more money and a very, very small amount of money towards social deprivation, the DUP objected to it then. This is not about what we call the indicator. This is about doing the actual thing of giving more money to schools with higher concentrations of social deprivation. And that's what the debate's about. 